Hi there, in this lesson we're learning about molecular structure and the shape of molecules. My name is Jeremy Krug, and if you like to learn chemistry or want to learn chemistry, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, check out my other videos on this channel. I've got lots and lots of chemistry videos for uh, first year chemistry in high school, AP chemistry, and general college chemistry. Well, when we talk about the subject of molecular structure, it is actually very important to us in chemistry because structure affects the physical properties of an object. And this occurs on the molecular level, very, very tiny. Uh, it also affects uh, things on a much larger scale. So for example, if you've seen this object right here, the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, we know that even though the legs of the arch are, are relatively thin, uh, we know that it stands up on its own. It's very durable because of the structure of that uh, object. On the other hand, if you have something like this, that is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge uh, that unfortunately collapsed back in 1940, and it had a lot to do with the way it was built. The structure of an object matters. The shape of an object matters. And that's why it's important to us in chemistry to try to visualize what molecules actually look like. Now, when we visualize these molecules in chemistry, we use a visual model called Lewis electron dot diagrams to help us to understand what molecules look like. Sometimes these are just called electron dot diagrams, sometimes they're called Lewis diagrams or Lewis structures, or sometimes they're called by that full name. And when we write or draw these Lewis electron dot diagrams, there are a couple of ground rules. First of all, you want to remember that the only electrons that actually participate in bonding are valence electrons. And so even though an atom may have lots and lots of electrons, we only care about the valence electrons. Those are the only electrons that we're going to represent in our Lewis electron dot diagrams. Now, if you're at this point in chemistry, hopefully you've already learned about valence electrons and you know how many valence electrons are in uh, an atom of each element. In case you've forgotten though, we might remember this little visual aid to help us keep that straight. And so elements in group one have one valence electron, elements in group two have two valence electrons, elements in group three have three valence electrons, and it goes like that uh, across the table here. Over to the noble gases, uh, most of those have eight valence electrons. Just so you know, we're working, generally speaking, with nonmetals. And so we need to know about the halogens having seven, the ones in group 16 have six, the ones in group 15 have five, and in group 14 they have four. We don't work much with group two, but hydrogen has one. Okay, so just keep that in mind and use that as we go through our structures today. Well, let's do several examples together. Now, the best way to uh, get good at this, at drawing Lewis electron dot diagrams, is to draw them yourself. And so we're going to try chlorine monofluoride. I have a little periodic table here on the screen so that you can see how many valence electrons each atom will have. Now the way that you do this is you just draw or, or write the two atoms symbols next to each other. So I'm going to write C, L, and F next to each other. We only have two atoms here, so it doesn't really matter which order you draw them in. I'll just put the F first, just for argument's sake here. And we're going to take a look at our periodic table, and we see, that, and we see here that fluorine has seven valence electrons. So I'm going to pair up seven valence electrons around the fluorine atom as best I can. So drawing seven around there just like that. Now I draw these in pairs because electrons like to be in pairs. Here in a future lesson we'll talk about uh, the more details about that, the you know, sometimes called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, but for right now we'll just put them in pairs. And then chlorine, we look at the periodic table, chlorine has seven valence electrons as well. So I'm going to put seven dots paired up around the chlorine just like that. Now at this point in the course, hopefully you remember that every atom that's not hydrogen basically, or helium, is striving to have eight valence electrons. That's called the octet rule. You know, oct means eight. So 
we want to make sure that the that according to the way that this structure is drawn everything has eight and I believe it does in fact what we can do is take these two dots here in the middle and call that a shared pair and when you have a shared pair essentially what that means is you know this this fluorine over here it can claim both of those electrons in the shared pair so it can say that it has eight and the same thing for chlorine chlorine also gets to claim both of those electrons in the shared pair so it can say that it has eight valence electrons so they both have an octet so that's the Lewis electron dot diagram for CLF now to make this complete I like to take the shared pairs and replace those with a line so I'm gonna draw the structure like this and so we here have our Lewis our finished Lewis electron dot diagram sometimes called a structural formula for chlorine monofluoride so we have all those dots the shared pair between an atom is going to be replaced with that line right there that represents a single covalent bond that's uh, taking place that's being shared between those two atoms let's try one that's a bit more complex let's try carbon tetrabromide now on a lot of these uh, molecular compounds here you're gonna find that there's one atom one element that's a central atom that's the one that gets drawn in the middle and all the other atoms are drawn around it hopefully it's pretty obvious that the central atom is the element that there's only one atom of which is carbon in this case so I'm gonna put carbon in the middle and arrange the four bromine atoms around it now in my experience after doing this for you know 30 years or more uh, my own experience is it's easiest if you start with the outside of the molecule and work your way toward the middle that's uh, what I found is the best way to avoid mistakes so looking at the periodic table bromine it's right here it has seven valence electrons so I'm gonna draw seven dots around each bromine so I'm gonna try to pair these up as best I can so there's seven 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 and seven so it's a total of 28 dots like I said I start with the outside and work my way to the inside so notice that in each case I put the seventh dot for each bromine on the middle there outside work my way in next we're going to go on to the carbon atom and looking at the periodic table carbon has four valence electrons so I'm gonna put four dots there trying to pair these up as, as best I can and it looks like it actually works out very nicely because I have one there one here one here and there's the fourth one and so once again the goal is for everything to have eight the octet rule so does everything have eight and it does the way I have it drawn notice I'm sharing electrons here so we have a shared pair here a shared pair here a shared pair here and a shared pair there so four shared pairs and I'm going to replace those shared pairs with a straight line to show that there's a covalent bond there so this is the finished structural formula of carbon tetrabromide it's going to look like this okay so notice that we have you know four covalent bonds there one between each carbon and bromine let's go on to another one let's try carbon disulfide now, once again I have to notice that carbon is the central atom so it's going to go in the middle there's only one carbon and the sulfurs will be surrounding it like this like I always do I start with the outside and work my way to the inside so sulfur looking at the periodic table here has six valence electrons so I'm gonna draw six dots around each sulfur six around this one and six around that one pairing those up as best I can and next we have the carbon and we look at the table and carbon is right here it has four valence electrons being in group 14 so put four dots around the carbon now once again the octet rule says everything needs to have eight and does everything have eight well no the sulfurs both have eight the way it's drawn 
but the carbon only has four. So when that happens, you have to start moving around some of these dots, have to start scooting them around so that they have eight. So one of the ways we do this is, for example, we can take a shared pair from one of our sulfurs, maybe the outside, and move that to the inside, just like that. And by doing that, do you notice that my sulfur here still has eight, but now my carbon is up to six. So carbon is getting closer to the octet. Now let's try it on the other side. Let's try this, uh, maybe this pair here on sulfur. I'm gonna move that to the inside, just like that. And now notice that this sulfur has eight, and now the carbon has eight as well. So we have two shared pairs over here and two shared pairs over here. So when you draw the structural formula for carbon disulfide, we're gonna have two lines in between each of the sulfurs and the central atom. So this represents the fact that we have a double bond. In fact, we have two double bonds. And that's important in this molecule because when we think about molecular structure, double bonds are stronger than single bonds. And that has a lot to do with the structure of this molecule. So as we uh, draw these, we'll find that sometimes, actually most of the time, we'll have single bonds, but we'll have double bonds as well. And every now and then we can even have triple bonds. And you can probably guess that triple bonds would be the strongest bond of them all. Now, let's try another one. Let's try sulfur dioxide. Once again, we're trying to obey the octet rule here. Uh, we're gonna put sulfur in the middle, and I'm gonna put oxygens around it there. So like always, I'm gonna start with the outside and work my way to the inside. I notice that the oxygen here has six valence electrons. So I'm gonna put six dots around each oxygen, six around that one and six around this one. And looking at the sulfur, notice that it has six valence electrons, whoops, six valence electrons as well. So I'm gonna put six dots around the sulfur just like this. So I've got 18 dots total. Now the octet rule says everything needs to have eight, more stable with eight. So I'm going to notice that the sulfur does not have eight, it only has six. So just like in the last example, I'm gonna have to start moving some dots around so everything has eight. So probably the easiest thing to do is to move some dots from one of the oxygens here over to the middle, just like that. And so now, just like that, everything has eight. So I have one there, and I have two shared pairs over here. And so when I draw the structural formula, I'm gonna have this. I have a single bond, I have a double bond, and I have an, an unshared pair that's still on that central atom. We call that an unshared pair. Sometimes it's called a alone pair because it's all alone, L-O-N-E, it's a lone pair. Uh, now, if you were to have this on a quiz or a test, there's a good chance that you might draw it like this. And you might think, well, that's the same thing. And as it turns out, it's not exactly the same thing. It's actually pretty close. It, it, one structure that we have drawn there is actually the mirror image of the other structure. It's kind of like your hands. Your two hands are not identical to each other. You cannot superimpose one hand upon the other, no matter how much you try to contort your arms. But your left hand is basically the mirror image of the right hand. And so that's kind of like what we have here. These are what we call resonance structures. Now resonance structures are when you have two or more correct, acceptable Lewis electron dot diagrams for the same molecule. Okay, so we have that. Now, just as a little disclaimer, um, we're drawing these as we obey the octet rule today. In a future lesson, we're gonna talk about some situations where we may break the octet rule. In fact, we might actually find that that's the case for this molecule right here. But for right now, we're gonna just uh, assume that this is what we have. Let's take a look at the next molecule, the nitrate ion. So we, yes, it is possible to draw Lewis electron dot diagrams for uh, polyatomic ions. In fact, it's pretty common that we do that. Once again, take a look at the central atom, and you can probably figure out that nitrogen 
is the one that needs to go in the middle. And we have three oxygen atoms, so I'm going to arrange those around the nitrogen like this. And like always, I like to start with the outside and slowly work my way to the inside. So the oxygen has, you can look at the periodic table here, it has six valence electrons. So six dots for each of those oxygens. So I have six around this one, six around that one, and six around this one. And next I have my central atom, which is the nitrogen atom right there. There's nitrogen. And it has five electron dots, five valence electrons, being in group 15. So five dots around the end, just like this. And you might notice that, th that this looks kind of weird because we have an odd number of dots. Well, that's not actually the case because notice that right there we have a negative charge. Now you might recall back from the section learning about cations and anions that negative means that it's gained an electron. So what that means is that since we have a negative charge, we have to add, we have to gain one bonus electron. And so do you see a place in here where it would be very convenient to add in one bonus electron? And I hope you see that it would work right there. And so that's our extra electron. So now we have all the, the dots in place. Does everything have eight? Well, it doesn't, does it? The nitrogen, as it's drawn, only has six. So we're going to have to scoot a couple of electrons from the outside into the inside to make this work. So I'm going to draw, uh, I'm going to move a pair from the oxygen right there into the middle. So now everything has eight. So when we start to look at shared pairs and unshared pairs, we have two shared pairs here, so that's going to be a double bond. And we have a couple of single bonds right here. So when you draw the, uh, the structural formula for this, you want to draw it like that, where there's one double bond and two single bonds. And of course, uh, it's negotiable as to where you put the the, uh, the 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 double bond it really it really could go on on any of those uh, places now notice that on this polyatomic ion i need to draw brackets around it and put the the charge off to the side to show that i've thrown in that bonus electron so that's why in the structural formula here i have the brackets around it with that negative charge to show that yeah that it's it's not a compound it's a charged particle it's an ion let's do one more together we'll try one that is uh, a fairly common but still a fairly notable exception to the octet rule as, as we might call it so we have the ammonia molecule nh3 that's called ammonia and of course you can probably see what the central atom is going to be, right? It's going to be nitrogen. We put that in the middle. And we have three hydrogens around it like this. And we start with, you know, the ones from the outside, work our way to the inside. And notice that the hydrogen is in group one. So it has one valence electron. Now, remember, hydrogen only has one energy level. So it's not trying to get eight. It's only trying to get two and so i'm going to put the dot for each hydrogen on the inside here so there's one dot for that hydrogen one dot for this hydrogen one dot for that hydrogen so it's not trying to get an octet it's trying to get two i guess you could call that a duet so now for nitrogen we see where it is on the table it's in group 15 so five dots for that one so five dots around the end like this and once again the nitrogen is trying to get eight, and it has eight, the way it's drawn. And every hydrogen is trying to get two, and look at that. Every hydrogen, as it's drawn there, has two. So notice we have three shared pairs, one, two, and three. And that means that we have three single bonds, one between each of the hydrogens and the central atom. And then there's this unshared pair, or this lone pair on that nitrogen as well. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you learned something, if you learned how to draw Lewis electron dot diagrams, please uh, smash that like button. I hope you subscribe to my channel. I've been teaching chemistry for over 23 years, and I hope that uh, uh, you join me again on my channel again, where we can learn some more chemistry together. together.